fraction. We know that fraction is a part of a whole. For example, when we divide this biscuit in four equal parts, we call each of these parts as fraction of the whole biscuit. A fraction is denoted by two numbers, one above, one below, and there is a horizontal line that separates them like this. The top number is called numerator and the bottom number is called denominator. Fraction means parts of something. The bottom number or the denominator means how many parts that something is divided into. The top number or the numerator means how many parts we have. For example, consider this biscuit. When we divide this into four equal parts and if I eat away one part, then we can say that I ate one by four of the whole biscuit. Here, the numerator is the part being eaten away and the denominator is the total number of parts, that is, four. Can you say what fraction of the biscuit is left here? Yes, you are right. Three by four of the biscuit is left here. Let us see few more examples of fraction. This chocolate bar is divided into nine equal pieces. I gave away five pieces to my friend. This means I gave away five by nine fraction of the chocolate to my friend. What fraction of the chocolate bar is left? Four by nine fraction of the bar is left. This is a circle. We divide this circle in 16 parts and shade seven parts. Since the total parts are 16, so 16 goes here and 7 parts are shaded, so 7 goes here. Then we can say that 7 by 16 parts are shaded. We can also say 9 by 16 parts are not shaded. What we have seen till now is fraction of a region or an area. A fraction can also be described as a part of a collection of things. For example, there are eight flowers. Three of the flowers are red. So, we say that three by eight fractions of flowers are red. These are the collection of balls. Four tennis balls, one football and five cricket balls. The total number of balls are ten. This means four tenths of the balls are tennis balls. One tenth of the balls are football. Five tenths of the balls are cricket balls. The fraction 3 by 8 is numerically written as 3 by 8 and it is written in words as 3 eighths. Similarly, 7 by 9 is numerically written as 7 by 9 and in words as 7 ninths. Remember, if the fraction is 1 by 4 or 1 by 5, then in words these are written as 1 fourth and one fifth. There is no S at the end here. Thus, a fraction is written in the form of X by Y, where X and Y are natural numbers. So far, we have been seeing that fractions are parts of a region or a collection of things. But fractions can be viewed in a different way also. We know that a division problem is written in many ways like these. 45 divided by 6. This is a division symbol. It can also be written as 45 divided by 6. And this can also be written as 45 over 6 or 45 by 6. And this looks similar to fraction. This means a fraction is actually a division problem but we consider it as a number. The top number or the numerator 45 is the number being divided up. The bottom number or the denominator is the number that we are dividing by. This means the fraction 1 half is same as 1 divided by 2. Similarly, 2 thirds is same as 2 divided by 5. Now, in division, we can have the numerator smaller than the denominator. For example, 5 divided by 6. In such a case, when we divide these numbers, we get a decimal number less than 1. But 5 by 6 in terms of fraction means 5 parts out of the whole 6 parts. Also, in division, 
we can have the numerator bigger than the denominator. For example, 8 by 7. In such a case, when we divide these numbers, we get a decimal number greater than 1. But 8 by 7 in terms of fraction means it is an improper fraction. It is not necessary that in a fraction, the numerator is always smaller than the denominator. There are fractions in which both are equal or numerator is greater than the denominator. Fractions such as 5 by 6 represents part of a whole. 6 by 6 represents a whole and 7 by 6 represents more than a whole. Let us do a review on different types of fractions. The different types of fractions are proper fractions, improper fractions, mixed fractions, like fractions and unlike fractions. Till now, we saw such fractions where the numerator is smaller than the denominator. This type of fractions are called proper fractions. Now look at the fraction 6 by 5. Is this a proper fraction? No, this is an improper fraction. A fraction in which the numerator is greater than the denominator. Such fractions are called an improper fraction. It is easy to identify a proper fraction as we select few parts out of many parts. But what about improper fractions? This is one whole. This is one half. This is three fourths and this is four fourths. What about when you have one more one fourth, then you have five fourths. Similarly, what about when you have one more one fourths, then you have six fourths. Three more one fourths makes it nine fourths. Thus, we see that improper fractions are numbers always greater than one whole. Now let us see the difference of like and unlike fractions. Look at the fractions 3 by 5, 6 by 5 and 8 by 5. What do you see in common in all these fractions? Yes, you are right. All these fractions have the same denominator. Fractions which have the same denominator are called like fractions. Now look at these fractions. 2 by 3, 6 by 7 and 4 by 9. Can you see anything common in them? Not really. Such fractions which does not have common denominators are called unlike fractions. So, to check if the given set of fractions are like or unlike, we just need to see if their denominators are common or not. Now, let us see another type of fraction, mixed fraction. To understand this, Consider a circle which is one whole. This is one half of a circle. This is three-fourth of the circle. This is four-fourth of the circle. Four-fourth is nothing but one whole and we can write this as one. Now, if we take another one-fourth of circle, what quantity do we get? We get one whole and one-fourth. We write it as one one fourth. Similarly, this is one two fourths or one and half. This is one three fourths. And this is one four fourths, which means two wholes. Observe these fractions. It is a combination of a whole number and a fraction. All such numbers we see here are combination of a whole number and a fraction. Such numbers are called mixed numbers. A mixed number has a whole part and a fractional part. The fraction here will always be a proper fraction. Remember, a mixed number can be expressed as x, y by z, where y is always less than z. Because we know that in a mixed number, the fractional part can always be a proper fraction. Also, x, y and z are natural numbers. 
equivalent fraction. An equivalent fraction means equal fractions. Let us consider three rectangles. One half of the first rectangle is shaded green. The second rectangle is divided into four parts and two parts are shaded. And so two-fourths part of the rectangle is shaded. The third rectangle is divided into eight pieces and four parts are shaded. So four-eighths part of the rectangle is shaded green. What do we notice from these pictures? We see that in all the three rectangles an equal amount of portion is shaded. You can observe this when we place the rectangles one below the other and you see that in all the three rectangles equal part has been shaded. This means these fractions are all equal. That is 1 by 2 is equal to 2 by 4 is equal to 4 by 8 are equivalent fractions. Now if we remove these rectangles we can still get these fractions by multiplying the numerator and denominator of the smallest fraction with a common number that is by 2. Therefore 1 multiplied by 2 over 2 multiplied by 2 gives 2 by 4. If we multiply 2 with 2 and with 4 we get 4 by 8 and thus we can keep getting larger and larger equivalent fractions by multiplying the numerator and denominator with the same number. Similarly, if there is a fraction 100 by 200, can we find smaller equivalent fractions? Yes, we can reduce this fraction into further equivalent fraction in this way. 100 divided by 100 and 200 divided by 100 equals 1 half. We just have to find the common factor of both numerator and denominator and then divide them by the common factor. Let us see another example. 27 by 108. We know the common factor of 27 and 108 is 3. So we divide both numerator and denominator by 3. We get 9 by 36. We further know that 3 is the common factor of 9 by 36. We divide it in the same way. We get 3 by 12. We can further divide it by 3 to get 1 by 4. This means all these fractions are equivalent fractions. Thus, we have seen that fractions are categorized into proper fraction, improper fraction, mixed fraction, like fraction and unlike fraction, and equivalent fraction.